In this video, I'm heading out to Alabama Hills, a rocky desert landscape near Death Valley, California. Photographically, it was a productive trip, though at times it was challenging finding good light, especially during midday. And I also tried to avoid the more popular, well-photographed areas and find my own unique subjects and compositions. Oh, really is beautiful out here. These rocks are just so dramatic. They just have this presence to them that uh, <laughs> just makes you feel so uh, small and insignificant when you're standing next to them. This is a pretty nice little grouping of elements where you have everything from these rocks over here in the foreground. And then you have this horizontal piece here. And then it kind of ladders up into this background back here with this, this window that goes up through here. And then you have uh, some lines going up this way and lines going up this way. And then you have the, the one in the back as well. And that's typically what I try to do when, um, you know, looking for something to shoot is try to find groupings of things that have a nice kind of rhythm and flow to them so that they, they fill the frame in, a, in an interesting way so that there's multiple things, multiple subjects within the frame. I think this works pretty well. I'm not entirely sure yet, but I'm gonna give it a shot nonetheless. And I'm being careful not to, uh, <laughs> not to walk like right over there. I came in from the side over there or else I'm gonna put footprints over there. I'm pretty happy with how this shot turned out. I just love how each rock uh, fills the frame from corner to corner and this empty gutter in between that does a pretty good job, I think, of leading the eye through the scene into the dramatic uh, vertical spires that are uh, standing up in the back. Alabama Hills isn't simply, you know, a cool place to go and, and, you know, camp out overnight and to do some exploring, do some climbing around on all these rocks around here and to do some photography as well. But this place is also interesting because it has a very long history in Hollywood. It has served as the backdrop for over 400 films. Now, granted, most of those films were before my time and before your time, I would assume as well. Talking about old, like black and white westerns, old John Wayne movies, Lone Ranger, that kind of stuff. And in addition to westerns, I mean, there has been some more recent films shot here as well, like some parts of uh, Django Unchained were apparently filmed here. I think some Star Trek episodes, or maybe, I don't know, something from Star Trek, maybe one of the movies was shot here. And I mean, it kind of makes sense why, right? I mean, it, it definitely looks like, a, like an alien landscape, especially when you kind of get away from the, from, the, uh, from the peaks back here and get in between the rocks in here. I mean, you could be, you could be anywhere, right? You could be Jean-Luc running around on, on, on some alien planet. This is kind of how it is in Alabama Hills when it comes to the light, where the only time you really get light down here in this valley, in this uh, area where all the rocks are, is um, in the middle of the day because this area is sandwiched in between two mountain ranges. There's a range back there behind me, and then you have Mount Whitney over here to the west, and the sun sets directly behind that and then comes up directly back that way. And of the two, that range back there is shorter. So sunrise works out better here. You get more, uh, better, more directional light. But as far as like getting light down into here, you know, for things like that, that's what I want to be photographing. <laughs> I mean, I love mountains and everything, but that, oh, that is just so good. Actually, I'm gonna, I'm gonna come back up here and take Take one more shot just to remember it. 
even though I'm going to be shooting directly into the sun, I want to do it anyway. In the late morning and early afternoon, the sun was directly overhead, making photography uh, more difficult. To avoid the sun, I decided to hike through various canyons and gulches to find subjects illuminated by ambient, reflected light instead of harsh, direct sunlight. Really beautiful little canyon back here that I hiked into. And right now I'm trying to get just the right angle. Oh, we're holding two cameras at the same time. I'm trying to get uh, just the right angle here so that I can shoot through this little, uh, kind of like little mini canyon in between these rock formations here. And what I love is the, is like the stair step that you get where there's a large boulder in the, in the middle of it. And then there's a few, uh, a couple of gray ones beyond that. And then right behind that, you start getting this golden light back there with some of the golden uh, rocks off in the distance. And I think it gives it a nice, a nice, uh, a nice uh, like sense of finality when you have this leading line, this strong leading line that is just going vertically up and through the frame and to have the light be back um, or back at the at the top of the frame. I'm trying to get up high enough <laughs> and I'm kind of running out of rock here in order to do it. Because um, uh, I tried it low and it wasn't quite right. And I feel like I'm starting to get it right now. So I'm gonna take a few pictures here before I fall off this little ledge. This is why I just love shooting sometimes with telephoto lenses. This image here was captured around 85 millimeters and at that focal length, uh, the landscape became compressed and the scale of the background, including the most important element of all, the golden rock just on the other side of the ridge in the foreground, you know, the thing that really grabbed my attention when I was uh, hiking through that, that canyon. The background and the rock, they appear larger and more prominent than they would if the image were captured using a standard or wide angle focal length. I also just love in this image the color contrast of the blue and orange, and I purposely cropped it to a square aspect ratio to give the image just a more peaceful, uh, balanced feeling. One of the biggest challenges I think when shooting on a, uh, on a bright, sunny day where there's no clouds, there's no diffusion, there's no, uh, the light is just really, really harsh. Even, you know, late in the afternoon like this, I mean, the sun is still uh, incredibly hot. But one of the things that I always try to do uh, is, you know, instead of, you know, photographing that way, because the sun is uh, directly behind the camera that way, instead of, you know, photographing in that direction where everything is just gonna be super flat because, you know, the light is just beaming directly onto it, is to try and find little uh, compositions like these Try to find some areas where the light is coming across at an angle and some of the elements within the shot, some of the, the little bits of texture and some of the, like the rocks and the contours of the ground, they're backlit. You're getting some of that light that is coming from here and you're shooting into the shadow and getting that, that edge light. It's kind of like, um, it's kind of like doing uh, like, um, like portrait lighting. You know, if you were like shooting a film or something, they always typically say, you know, to like shoot into the shadow and to illuminate the face on this side. And, you know, instead of shooting directly into the light. And it's a very similar kind of thing here. And this is just what I'm actively seeking out by kind of, you know, getting down inside of these canyons back in here. And then finding these openings, finding these places like this right here, which is just beautiful with this light that is just, just cascading through here and getting that nice edge on the side of some of the, of some of the, um, some of these rocks here, which gives it some shape and some dimension. If you ever struggle like trying to figure out how to take photos on a bright sunny day, you know, try to find some places like this and find some edge lighting and shoot into the shadow and um, see what you're able to get that way.
find all kinds of interesting things actually when you get down in these little valleys, in these little like grass filled valleys down here. And it's really nice down in here. Obviously you get a little bit of shade from the sun too. And then there's this beauty up here behind me. So awesome. Probably not gonna be able to get my, oh, wow. This is, well, check this out. I'm not sure if you're gonna be able to see that. It looks like there's a, like there's an opening in this rock up here. Yeah, I think it, yep. Oh, wow, it goes all the way through. So awesome. Let's see if I can fit through this thing. Yep. Oh man. Nice and shady and cool in here. So awesome. Ah, almost got caught on the end there. Wow, yeah, that rock is just completely eroded. And it looks like it just fell over into this little in-between spot here, into this little valley. And uh, into this like gulch where all this water runs down and it must've just eaten a, a, a giant hole in it. So yeah, pretty cool little, pretty cool little arch. Another unusual yet, I think just beautiful rock here uh, that I found in Alabama Hills. And the light was surprisingly good for midday. I lucked out with a little bit of cloud cover and it helped soften the light just a little bit. For me, there's something almost classical about this uh, subject to me, the, the balance of light and dark that makes it feel almost like a subject that would have been you know, drawn using charcoal and paper, like an art school drawing class, <laughs> you know? Like it, um, yeah, and that's what I was thinking about when I was hiking up on that hill and I saw, and I saw this, you know, sitting up on the hill and, um, and it just really grabbed my attention. Well, I am pleasantly surprised. I came out here, uh, <laughs> you know, expecting not to capture much of anything. I thought I was just going to do some, some scouting and, uh, and taking some pictures, but I got uh, a little bit lucky in this cloud cover. All these clouds just rolled in. Uh, all the light just got dimmed down a little bit. It kind of just made a giant diffuser in the sky, helped soften some of the highlights against some of these boulders here. And uh, actually made it somewhat feasible. And I think there's a fair amount of, um, of light that is being reflected as well uh, off of the various rocks that are in here. And, the, and that reflection is filling in some of these shadows so that they're not too, too dark. Well, I'm trying not to get too excited. Trying, you know, you know how it goes. You look at things on the back of the viewfinder and you think, oh, this is gonna be the best thing ever. This is gonna be awesome. By the way, going back through oh, this little, arch that I discovered here, which is uh, <laughs> really awesome. I don't know what it is exactly about, uh, you know, why it is that I'm so attracted to rock formations like these and seeking these out because all you have to do is go to my website and look at my, um, my portfolio site and see some of the you know, the variety of images that I've taken. And this is definitely a theme for me. And this is something that I've kind of latched onto and that I've found. And, um, and I just, I really, really do enjoy. And I can't really explain what it is, exactly why. I think I'm gonna have to scramble up this thing. Hang on a second. I don't know what it is exactly photographically that draws me to subjects like these. I just, uh, I don't know, I just, I have a thing for it. And I think something that I have learned on this, I guess you would call it just a never ending journey <laughs> of figuring out you know, what exactly it is that I want to accomplish as a photographer, as someone who is creating images. You know, what is it that, what is it that speaks to me the most? What is it that inspires me? And what is it that, gets me the most excited when I'm out in a landscape. And for whatever reason, at least at the present moment for me, 
a lot of it is this. There's just something about the challenge, I think, of finding some symmetry and some order to this just inherently just chaotic and crazy assemblage of, uh, of geology that's just all kind of just tossed around and thrown in together and just climbing around in there, just finding little angles and little vignettes and finding these incredibly just powerful, dramatic subjects. I think this is, you know, one of the things that when you have something inside of you that is telling you uh, to go and photograph more of that, I think it's an important thing that everyone should do with their own work is to just think about which images you've created resonate with you the most and, um, and why, and why that is. And perhaps there's something there, perhaps there's something there that's worth exploring and doing more of and chasing just to see where it leads you and see what happens. Because a lot of times with stuff like this, there is no <laughs> destination. I mean, I can't really explain where it is that I'm going with it or why. But for whatever reason, it means something to me and it resonates. And for me, that's enough. Mm -hmm.